Um, my name is Fahim. Uh, I really appreciate you guys calling me here. Uh, my story started because I cannot get, stay out of trouble. Okay, so you, if you look behind my life, that's always been the case. So I was supposed to trek to the base camp. Uh, so, um, anyways, you know, you know the whole story. Um, but when I, the, the real story actually, I spent two weeks in Nepal, uh, almost 13 days. And when I, and it was hard work. It was rewarding. It was challenging. But the real work actually started when I landed back in the United States. As soon as I landed, within a couple of hours, I realized everything around me was very normal. Okay, and I just didn't feel like I was normal inside. Okay, when you when you are there for that long, and you hug the people in the villages who have not had food for days, when you land in villages where they tell you we are okay, but you may want to check on our neighbors, or when you land in villages where they tell you there are three people who died of starvation in the other village, when you land in a in a, in a hospital where you when you meet and sit down with kids who have lost their parents and they're recovering from fracture. And, they, and the first thing you think of is, you know, you've healed a fracture, but where are they gonna go after there, right? Where are they gonna be discharged to? Those are all those things that flash back at you. And when I looked at everything around me when I landed, everything seemed normal and just, I just could be normal. So at that time I realized we needed to really make all American community and the world realize the disaster was not about the earthquake. It was more about the people. It was the people's resilience and the strength that really mattered. Okay? You guys know better than I do. Okay, the beauty of the people of Nepal, right? I was in I landed in villages where they had nothing and I was offered tea and and you masala jai plead with chai tea, right? Chai and whatever they can get, I got that, right? Um, but the biggest challenge is yet to face because America is not engaging in Nepal the way they need to engage. And we are the, one of the powerful nations in the world, okay? I, being an American, was embarrassed when the president announced $1 million for his early relief, but that showed me that he probably has either no idea what's going on or they're just not interested, and either way it was embarrassing. So I gave him a $1 million challenge. I said, you know, President Obama, I can probably raise more than that myself alone, okay? And if I do that, then my challenge to you will be that you really need to engage in Nepal. And when I came back, I realized there was nothing happening on the ground. So where I need your help is to mobilize our government. And the only way they will mobilize is when they see masses like you getting together. Because honestly, the United States has no interest in Nepal. There's not a political entity that they need to worry about. So they will only engage if we tell them this is the right thing to do as Americans. Okay? And the way we do it is we unite together under one voice, all of us. And then we call our congressional leaders, senators and congressmen, and we ask them that we have families there, we have loved ones there, and this is the right thing for you to do, okay? The other thing is they should not be turning Nepal into another Haiti, but that's a different story, okay? Haiti, we spend $10 billion, and out of every dollar, one cent men actually to the people on the ground. That's how terrible our work of relief was. But what's really needed right now is Nepal needs years of the rebuilding and engagement. Okay? With the monsoons coming, people in America, our congressional leaders have no idea. Okay? When the monsoons coming, the biggest challenge for us is what? We had bigger challenges, diseases. I was in Kathmandu, people are tenting everywhere. You get, uh, how many people were in, in Kathmandu in the last two weeks? Anybody there? Right. So you've seen people pitching tents all over the place. They're in, out of the airport, they're in the parking lot, they're next to their homes. Plus, there are people who are really scared of living inside their homes, and I don't, you know, and, and they are pitching tents everywhere. With the monsoons coming, the biggest disaster will come with cholera, malaria, dysentery. I've been in villages where people were separated from the rest of the village because of the mudslides and the landslides. Okay, that's a huge thing. The other third thing which people are not really talking about is human trafficking. Okay, Gordon Brown said an article a couple of days ago in Huffington Post, that the human trafficking rate will be tripled in the last couple of weeks. Okay, there are predators who are on the ground, um, and it is a terrible situation. Our government really needs to be mobilized, and the only way we'll mobilize them is by coming together. So, I appreciate you all coming here. I have a, I have a really, I have lots of good stories to tell you. Okay, because when I was in the village, I could not help everybody. We gave them food and shelter, but I cannot help thousands of those people. But pretty much everybody that I met. 
and we hugged and we cried. And there were times that we, we, uh, we myself and my whole team, okay, we had people who've been in multiple scenarios. A lot of us were getting into the helicopters and we were teary-eyed by the time we got back, okay? But the only thing we t told them was, we promised we're gonna tell your story. So I have stories to tell you. So I want you to come Sunday. I have a presentation, I have some videos, I have pictures. I know you guys have seen a lot on my Facebook page. But there are a few stories that I really want to tell you that I promise the people that I will tell you. But anyways, I appreciate you guys listening to me and being with us. And I think, like I said, the work has just started. We have to keep moving forward. And the only way the work will move forward is if we all unite together. Okay? At this point, we are not American. We are not Nepal. We are just one entity. We are one humanity. We are one human beings. Even if you've never been to Nepal, it will hurt the same. Okay, I've met people who've never been to Nepal. My patients who've come and, you know, hugged me and, you know, told me they're going to support us. Okay, it's just because we have another human being. So that is one thing that unites us. And that is one thing that will mobilize our government to do the right thing, to get engaged and help those people. Thank you so much.